I just walked away from a multi six figure company and I am leaving the DEI space. Oh, I cannot believe that this is happening. I'm gonna break it down, be a little vulnerable and take y'all behind the scenes um, and tell y'all what's been going on and why I decided to walk away from it all. I can't believe I'm even making this video. I'm super nervous to talk about this, but I'm gonna tell you why. And to do so, I had to run it back to 2020. So in 2020, I finally worked up the courage to build out my consulting firm. I had the idea back in around like 2018, 2019-ish. It was a fleeting thought in 2018, but in 2020, after all the protests and after George Floyd was murdered. I saw a lot of people entering the DEI space and they didn't know nothing about DEI. And I'm just like, if they can do it, I definitely can do it. I had, it had been a year and a half since I got my doctorate and I had just built out, not just, but a year prior to that, I built out Save the Children's first ever DEI strategy. Like, hello, if not me, then who? <laughs> Anyways. So I went all in and I launched on my birthday. It was a very monumental date. It was when I first crossed over into a six figure salary. It was when I became a federal employee. It was also during the beginning of the pandemic. Um, it was just a huge milestone year for me. And yeah, I came up with a name. I remember texting my sister and telling her names and sending her um, pictures of logos that I had drafted and her and her partner were helping me decide on <laughs> logos. And I finally decided on one, came up with a name and thus DSRD Consulting was born. Now, because I was a federal employee, I couldn't go all in. So as the true autistic person that I am, the systems thinker that I am, I built out the entire organizational structure, service offerings, and thought about how I wanted the company to look while I was working full time. And I also met my now really good friend, Ari, who was then my business coach. She had spent years in the project management, um, consulting space, built her own company, and is very, just a, a phenomenal person. Her brain is huge and she's really good at systems thinking and business analytics and creating systems and processes and automating them. And for three months, we worked together and built out my company. And it was through that process where I also ramped up my skills. Like I learned tools that I had never heard of before. And because I'm so good at systems thinking, I learned how to build systems like that. And it became natural to me. And so I was in the background, just building, building, building. I built my brand up. I shared my knowledge on social media and grew my platform to 10K in a year. And another pivot happened. I was in a very toxic work situation. My manager was super micromanagey and it just was toxic all around. And I decided to um, pivot once again. I didn't pivot fields, I pivot jobs. And I transitioned to being a director. This, is, this was a phenomenal position. It was the first of its kind. I had a platform where I can build something from the ground up and develop even more skills as a leader, as um, a strategist, and in just in terms of networking, I was working with CEOs across North America, 150 of them, and I was tasked with leading the development of an entire international organization strategy. Um, and then another pivot happened. Four months in, I felt the urge that it was time for me to go off on my own. And after buying my second house, buying a new car, moving into that house, during the pandemic with so, so much uncertainty, I quit. I quit my job and I went all in with my company. And officially my first week 
of being a entrepreneur, a CEO, whatever you want to call it. I feel very aligned. I feel very like free. I feel like I can like take an actual breath. I have been working tirelessly on planning out the launch for the DEI strategy development program I'm working on. I have a business coach. I'm more intentional and strategic and I'm like planning stuff out. I've been working with my curriculum design expert, uh, DC. We've been going in and trying to outline this program, write the scripts, get all the content together. So this week has been very intense. So that's me, you know, sticking to my boundaries, practicing self-care and making sure that I don't have a healthy work-life balance and I'm not doing too much. Boy, was I in for a ride. After this, I did way too much. Invested 96 hours a week. I invested over 10, like $15,000 to build out my program DEI bl blueprint. I dumped everything that was in my brain to build out that program. I went in on marketing. I did all the things. I continued to work with my business coach and joined her community of other entrepreneurs. Now, after I went all in, I had a very successful launch. I had a five figure launch and that was the most money I've made like on my own ever. And so I was consistent with it. And then eventually, like three months later, I made it to six figures. And in my first year, so from October, 2021 to October, 2022, I made multiple six figures. And I'm laughing because in the moment, I didn't even stop to really like process what had happened. I remember telling my sister about it. And then I just went on. I just kept on trying to accomplish and do things because that's, that's what I've always done. Now that stems to like some childhood stuff that I won't get into in this video, but I have a habit of one, using work to suppress my emotions and to avoid my emotions. Two, using work and my achievements and my accomplishments to sort of prove my worthiness to myself and to kind of, I don't know, it, it was heavily tied to my self-worth and I mean, shit, I have four degrees. so. And I did it all before I was 30. So I've just always been that way as a kid. And I realized that it got me a lot of attention. It got me a lot of um, um, people pouring into me, showing support whenever I did something great. So I just kept doing great things. And that's not to like sound braggy or pat myself on the back, but it really became like a survival mechanism for me. And so I kept on going. I got to a point in the company at the height of 2022 where I plateaued and not in terms of sales but like everything was running smoothly everything was going well I had a solid lead list solid conversions people were really in interested in DI blueprint and I felt like I need to do more like I need to grow more everyone is talking about diversifying your incomes I need to do more things and while I was in the hospital after a devastating loss family loss, I decided to launch our app, DI Offload. I spent one month. It took me one month to build out the entire app. One month. That means I was working, had to be like 96 hours a week. I, I calculated it. It was like 96 hours a week. My eyesight got bad. Now I wear glasses. <laughs> it's not funny, but now I wear glasses. And what prompted me to do that was a lot of poverty trauma. I grew up really poor. Um, I was hyper independent as a child because I had to be and I have been very poor again real broke um right before I started my consulting company while I was doing my doctorate because I decided to quit my job back then and my identity started to become intertwined with my role and title as CEO and DEI strategist I realized that I have a very unique perspective uh, and approach to doing this work and people loved my ideas, they loved my thoughts, they loved my perspective on things, and I enjoyed that. I, very difficult for me to admit publicly, but I craved the attention. I really craved the praise because it's something that I've always longed for to kind of validate myself and validate like, yes, you really are an expert. I don't think you can be an expert in DI, but that's another video. But you really are like, you're the shit. Like, you're good at what you do. Like, you know what you're doing. And I used all of those praises and attention to kind of validate myself. And that was downfall number one because, like, my work became who I was. And so I worked even harder. And even though those things happened at the beginning of 2022, I pushed through, built out the app, had an amazing launch, 
and then created an entire 60 page self-study and toolkit that complements the program. That went well. And then I also, my partner and I broke up, so I was no longer engaged anymore. I also found out shortly after that I was autistic and then a month after that I was officially, officially diagnosed. And this is all in one year. <laughs> And in spite of all the things that I accomplished, I still didn't feel enough. I was comparing myself to all the other flourishing DEI practitioners and professionals out there. And I was like, ooh, I wanna do that too. Like, I wanna do all the things. And not necessarily because I wanted to be in competition with them. I don't compete with anyone. Honestly, I really do compete with myself. However, I wanted to be the best. I told y'all before, like, I always, try to accomplish all these things. Um, and it was the end of 2022 where I was like, girl, something has to change. You aren't sleeping well, you barely sleep. All you do is work. You're very lonely, you're depressed. You just stay at home. You don't interact with many people. And all you have to show for it is a successful company and that's it. That's never what I wanted for my life. I knew I've always wanted to have a company, but I didn't want to only have a company. And so 2023 rolls around. And like I said, I'm conditioned and used to using work to kind of push through and not process my emotions. Cause those are some heavy things to process. And I pushed through and then we officially launched our app. So first it was a prototype and then we launched the full app in the app store, February, 2023. So literally a year after the first signs of burnout I felt in 2022. I decided that yes, I am burnt out and yes, the DEI space is super heavy. And I've been doing this work since 2010 in the biomedical space, researching hypertension, doing health equity. And I'm a bit, it's too heavy now. Like I, it, it's exhausting to have to keep up with everything that's going on while simultaneously being someone that is being affected by everything that's going on. And so I still pushed through and I decided, well, if I hire more contractors, they can help me and take off some of the load. And my amazing executive assistant, who is also a part-time contractor, she's been rocking with me since 2021. And when I made that decision, it did not, <laughs> it did not solve the problems. In fact, it gave me more problems. What I didn't realize was when you hire people who are depending on your company and your revenue for their paycheck, that is a lot of pressure. I now felt more pressure to perform even more. I was pumping out so much content on multiple platforms. I used to post at least three times a week, mostly four, and I would pre-plan all the content for like three months in advance, create graphics from scratch, I, I'm not retweeting or like repurposing anyone's con. No, this is all things that are new ideas pumping out of my head four times a week for three months at a time. That was happening. My new autistic diagnosis was happening and masking was becoming even more difficult for me because the more burnt out and stressed I became, the harder it was for me to mask. And me unmasking, I've never unmasked. I didn't, I don't, I didn't know how to handle that. So I'm navigating that and now I have three people who are depending on me and I'm having to deliver services because I was also consulting on top of having the program and the app and people in the app and the program also work with me one on one basis. So I have all these different avenues of people needing something from me when I didn't have enough energy to show it for myself and the little bit of energy I had I was pouring it into my company. And the part about trying to scale, I immediately was like, uh-uh, get somebody else to do it because I'm really good at pattern recognition and kind of, um, I have really good foresight. And I immediately knew, and then my business coach was like, girl, I'm telling you, scaling is not fun. It looks nice on the outside when you can say, oh, I'm making all this money and I have a team and we have cool meetings and we have a nice notion, which I wanted all those things. I love organization and I've always wanted to be the cool boss. People have always said like, if you ever had a company, I will come work for you. And 
I wanted to be that. And so I try to be the cool boss and launch this in-person event for my app, for the people in my app, my community members, and then pay for all the contractors to come down. And mind you, I, I only made six figures. <laughs> I, I'm not in the seven figure bracket yet. And I'm a very new company. We are not backed. We're not VC backed. There's no money raised. Like it's me bootstrapping. It's me. <laughs> the money's coming from me. So I'm just like, girl, why did you think to do that? Because you want to be a cool boss and you want to like test it out and see what it's like. Like what? So I did all of that and I made it through. It was an, a very successful event. I had fun. It was my first in-person event since the beginning of the pandemic. And I burnt out literally shortly after that I was going to keep on going I had some really good ideas I made some really good cool graphics I got really strong lead we got trademarked a lot of good things happened shortly after that but I was like this is not sustainable like I can't keep doing this by myself and then I wasn't being a good boss I wasn't being a good leader I would I was still acting as if I was a team of one and I would have all these ideas and change things at the last minute and just expect my team to understand what I was doing. I didn't like that. It made me feel terrible. I had to go through the process of letting people go. I didn't like that either. So it was a lot of growth and a lot of change and a lot of transitions all at once. And when you add all of that to the pressure of working in DEI as a black woman, as a neurodivergent person, oh my gosh, they're like these unrealistic expectations that are placed on you while doing this work especially as a black woman you're tasked with advocating for everybody's problems including your own like that's a lot and i realized that my company was no longer a source of freedom and autonomy and a safe space for me it was now a nine to five i was like chained to my clients to the people in my community to the people in our program I was chained to those things. Like I felt like a machine, that I, like a robot that was just pumping out stuff. And that's not what I started my company for. And I, I kind of lost sense of who I was. I didn't know who I was. All I knew was that I was a DI strategist and I was autistic. But I'm way more layered and complex and deeper than that. And I didn't have the space to figure out who I was as I was navigating all that change because I was so damn tired. I literally had no energy. So even though I technically made this decision at the end of 2023, for real, for real, I am now making the leap of faith. And it took me so long because I was really afraid. I was afraid of what was next. I was afraid of not having a plan and not knowing what was next. I am still afraid financially I wouldn't say I'm afraid, but I'm a little bit like, uh. <laughs> again, poverty trauma is not something that you can just quickly let go of. But yeah, bills need to be paid. And like I told y'all, I am the only person that pays my bills. <laughs> so yeah, there are, there is still a lot of fear, but I am not letting my fear, my fears stop me. I am going to push through and harness all of the courage that I had at 2020, in 2020, in 20, the end of 2017 when I quit my job then, in 2014 when I decided to up and move to a whole entire state that I never had been to before with no family there. I've done a lot of pivots. This one will be no different. I always, it's always worth it, no matter how scary and difficult it is to go through it. And despite me entering this new chapter of my life and having to rebuild new routines, rebuild community, rebuild my support system, I'm still excited because I get to embark on this journey from an exploratory lens. Normally I'm super planned out. I know exactly what I'm gonna do or an idea of what I want to do. And this time around, I haven't really thought much about that. I know that what's next for me is centering rest, prioritizing rebuilding community, and pouring into myself and truly resting. And I want to encourage other entrepreneurs that it's okay to pause. It's okay to stop. It's okay to let go of something that you poured thousands of dollars into. It's okay. There are seasons in our lives for a reason. And once the season ends, it's okay. 
it's okay to start a new chapter and even though it may be super super duper hard very uncomfortable very frightening it's worth it i've done it plenty plenty of times for me to know for a fact that it's worth it and i remind myself like if i've made it this far think about how much further i can go that's what i've been telling myself and i know i'm not alone um my sister has been a huge part of my support system and my mom has always encouraged me to do what feels in alignment with myself and that's the other thing that i'll be doing is kind of relearning who i am in this new phase of my life and as i transition to this new chapter hence this youtube channel i'll be taking y'all on this journey with me i'm super nervous about it because i'm very very private but i'm going to be vulnerable and be exploratory and kind of just have fun with this and talk about the highs and the lows i to be very transparent i was able to take time off um for the last four months in 2023 because of savings and then i came back to work really quickly and generated revenue there's some passive revenue streams through my company and so i'm privileged in that way however the fact that i am pivoting out of the dei space and taking a break from entrepreneurship for a little bit i don't it's super scary <laughs> i've been working ever since i was 15 16 15. um so i've been working all my life i deserve this break you deserve this break if you haven't taken a break please try and take a break and truly rest in the next video i'm going to take you behind the scenes of what i did to fully exit my company i'll show you every single thing that i've built including all the processes and systems and how i've automated them and how i'm gonna undo all of that and show you what that's like. Thank you so much for watching. I know this is one of my longer videos. I hope that the things that I've shared has been um, affirming and sort of motivational and it was what you needed at the time. Um, to follow me for the rest of my journey, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I have a goal of hitting a thousand subscribers. So please subscribe, like the video if you liked it and leave a comment. Um, normally at the end of my videos, I love to leave a question for folks to answer, but this time I don't have anything. Um, I do want you to let me know something that stood out from what I said. Uh, this is the most vulnerable and transparent I've been about my personal life publicly. Um, so thank you for holding space for me and being here with me as I shared. See you in the next video. Bye.